<clears throat> so uh, I'm going to do my presentation on, on uh, gardening. Uh, obviously, gardening is something I've been wanting to do for uh, for a, a while, and I remember uh, having discussions with Frank about hydroponics, hydroponic gardening, and stuff like that. And about maybe three years ago, I introduced that to a friend of mine who had already been gardening at home in uh, Seattle. And then uh, he told me, you know what? Don't even waste your time with uh, hydroponics through aquaponics, you know, because you can get fish and food, and you don't have to really be buying a bunch of things to prepare uh, to. Uh, uh, nutrients, because your, your fish is producing a lot of nutrients. So I tried that out. Um, it, it was it was going all right. I was do, I was doing well. And then when I moved to Edinburgh, <clears throat> about a month or two later, he told me about uh, this film called Back to Eden. Uh, you can uh, you know the the website is there. It's Back to Eden Film dot com. And pretty much, <clears throat> I mean, if you garden the way this guy does, which is just as natural as you know, you just do whatever the land does. <clears throat> uh, you can watch the film for free, for free on here. Uh, you know, they have a, it's it's free. You can watch it. Uh, he explains everything he does, or wh how he came about. You know, gardening the way he does, and pretty much it's just you let the land do everything. You know, he he. I remember watching the video. He says, "Nowhere in nature does the soil get tilted." Why, why would you do all this extra work to do stuff? Basically, what he discovered was that anywhere you have fertile land, it's always covered by something. Either grass, leaves, you know, the forest is always, the land is always fertile there because it's always covered by something. The leaves are coming down, branches are coming down, there's insects, everything is happening there. But when you don't have a covering, you, know, you just have a bunch of dirt. You have this hard rock, dry dirt. So basically what you do is you have to cover your, your, uh, your ground with something, you know, usually mulch or wood chips or something like that. And that's pretty much what I did. <clears throat> uh, you begin to realize that uh, your land starts becoming more fertile, becomes softer, the weeds just kind of come out, you just kind of pull them out. You know, you don't really have to do anything. So I started uh, a garden back in uh, December 2012. When I started my, uh, uh, I think it was about 16 feet by 24 feet. You know, I went to the city of McCown and I bought some, uh, some dirt there, some compost, uh, real cheap. I bought a, a cubic yard for like 20 bucks. Uh, I wound up buying two cubic yards. It's been about $40. In total, I got about three cubic yards because they just kind of loaded with a big old tractor so they're not really they're not really measuring what's going on. I then bought a uh, a cubic yard of uh, of mulch. Now let me just show you the, the earlier pictures here of when I started the garden. We'll get down here. You have a traps the light to one? Uh yeah if you want I guess if y'all can see. Uh, pretty much what I what I've discovered is that gardening is it's easy, easier than you can imagine. Uh, I, I, I don't even know why I had been gardening, you know, when I was young. It's just, we get, in, we get into this, or uh, well, they put it to our heads that these things are very complicated to do, you know, to grow plants. You know, you need all these machines, and you need all these chemicals, and how do you deal with the bugs, and you need to add this to the land. But uh, <clears throat> the only time I really work in my garden is you know, at the beginning when you're when you're doing, you know, when you when I started it, after that I just, you know, do very minor things. So here's the when I first started. So basically, what I what I did. <coughs> is uh, again something I learned from, from the film is that uh, I had some grass, right? Most of the time we, we you know, kind of dig out the grass, you want to get rid of the grass. Uh, but there's an easier way. What I did is I laid down some newspaper on the ground and then I put my dirt on top of the newspaper. So what happens is the newspaper is going to suffocate all the grass underneath and then the newspaper decomposes and then your whatever you put on top and then your, your ground dirt, it all kind of just meshes together. So when I started this garden back in, in, uh, in December, 
Uh, I pretty much I get a newspaper, compost from the city of McAllen, spent about $60 maybe in total, all the stuff I had on there. <clears throat> Let me see if I can get another picture here. Not that one, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have to go the other way. So. It's a little slow, but <clears throat> I started, uh, and then back in uh, like the next January, February, March, I started kind of planting stuff, just throwing some seeds on the ground. There's the mulch that I got. You can see a whole bunch. I paid thirteen dollars for that mulch right there. It's just a small truck, but I mean, you can you can buy a bag for two or three dollars. I paid thirteen dollars for the whole thing there. So it's it's real cheap, you know. Getting it at the city of down the Monte Cristo. Um, it's uh, 29th Street. I think it's called Ruth, R O O T H. I think. But it's 29th Street. It's a, it actually, I don't know. It doesn't cross all the way, but it is part of McAllen uh, down over here on Monte Cristo. So what I what I did notice that first year, I, I grew a lot of stuff. I planted a lot of things. I didn't get a uh, like wonderful results, but I got enough food to keep me motivated, you know, and keep planting. Uh, this year, my my dirt. My, uh, the mulch obviously matured and decomposed more and things just started growing like crazy. I've got uh, four or five huge tomato plants. I've got another 12 small tomato plants. Let's see. You can see there. Maybe let's just go back to the other and then just kind of roll up and down. <clears throat> but I've grown uh, squash, uh, zucchinis, uh, cucumbers, carrots, you know. this was the, the finished garden right there, I don't know if you can see it. So after I got everything going, I kind of fixed it in, I had a, we had a puppy at that time that was getting in there, so I just made a small fence. And then the dog grew, so I had to build a bigger fence. <laughs> I have noticed that carrots, I mean, uh, a few rabbits do go in there. Not, not, not much, because the dog kind of scares them away. But, you know, you see like a tomato that's kind of eaten. You know, you see some, uh, some of the, uh, uh, what is it called? Some beets that were, were dug out. <clears throat> but <clears throat> the main thing is that it's, it's, it's extremely easy to grow stuff. All it requires is patience. For me, it took a year to get to where I'm at now. And people walk into my garden, they look at it, they, I mean, I literally look like an experienced gardener. Mm -hmm. If I showed you my pictures, I could pretty much say oh, I've been gardening all my life, and people would believe it. But I'm into my second year, and it's just uh, amazing. You can see my, I try to get my girls involved in there sometimes. Uh, but it's, <clears throat> the benefits to gardening, are, you know, we, we uh, this year, I haven't bought any lettuce, haven't bought any greens. You know, we do buy a few, maybe apples and stuff like that, but uh, we haven't bought any carrots. You know, I just pick some carrots out from the ground and my girls will eat the carrots just straight out, you know, just rinse them off or whatever. Uh, what is that? I don't want that. Let's see if I can show you some more stuff. Uh, obviously, some of you guys have seen the videos of, of uh, my girl, when I, my, my, my four-year-old. I went to the garden and I cut up a, a head of broccoli, and she's eating it right from the, uh, from the garden there, you know. And they, my, my girls will eat broccoli. They eat, they eat spinach. Well, the youngest one doesn't eat as much as the oldest one. I, I, I've been, we've been working with the, with the youngest one now, but I did share a video where she was eating broccoli all by herself. I just gave them a piece of broccoli. And they're just eating broccoli just by itself. It's not cooked. I don't have to add cheese to it. I don't have to add salt or anything flavorful. And they'll just they'll just eat it. And it's just uh, pretty much they eat it because we'll eat it at home, and because it's being grown at home. You know that's a that's a big plus. Let me see. 
see if I can get to those pictures a little slow there. <clears throat> but I think the benefits to gardening is, like you were saying, we can grow our own food. People that are that are, are wanting to uh, or don't have employment, right? Mm -hmm. Or people that want to be involved in things because it's all about money, right? And they always tell us that money doesn't grow in trees, right? Because we've always heard, hey, money doesn't grow in trees. <clears throat> but one thing I realized is, is uh, what do we want the money for? Right? And that's why I explained to them, what do we want the money for? Do we want to just keep it? Do we eat it? Do we use it? To, no, we use it to get the things that we want. But at growing up, what do they teach us? That you got to go chase the money, right? Chase the money, you got to get that paycheck. They never really tell us that, hey, the only reason you want that money is to what? To buy tomatoes, carrots, the things that you really need. This is a arguing, or I mean, it's not uh, working with me today, but <clears throat> I mean, you can see some pictures there. Obviously, if you go to my Facebook page, you can watch a whole bunch of pictures there of, uh, of uh, things that I've grown. <clears throat> I do have a story where I was growing a Swiss chard and beets, and I, well, I would cut off the, the, the leaves from the Swiss chard, and we would eat it, and I would post pictures. And then I realized later that I wasn't eating Swiss chard. We were eating the, the greens from the beets, mm -hmm. you know, because they were just so close together. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but, you know, they're, they're edible. You can eat them, you know. <clears throat> uh, I wish I could show you the pictures, but... Try closing the browsers and logging in again. I think they might be... Oh, maybe I can use that light. Yeah, try closing. There's a lot of windows open at the bottom, so I can take But do you have any, any questions or anything... Uh, You'd like to ask our mom this uh, this this experienced farmer that you uh, <laughs> that you now see in front of you, Armando. Are you suggesting that working within the confines of natural law is more effective than trying to engineer the land to our own hands? Yeah, I think I think so. And if you know, if you watch that video, the the back to the garden, the guy is very religious, very spiritual. So I know some people may be, but if you listen to everything he says. It's basically just talking about nature and how it works. And yes, he does quote the Bible and how it says this or whatever, but if you, if you pay attention to everything he says, he's, worried, he's talking about, about nature, how it works, how it's supposed to do all the work for you, right? Because you're not... And if you watch, when you watch the video, I know he's... There's some, he's I, I, I'm not sure if I read what had happened to him, but he's, he had a, he's kind of like injured to some degree because he walks a little... A little but he's able to run his whole, uh, I don't want to say a farm because he doesn't call his thing a farm because he doesn't sell any food. He, uh, he grows a whole bunch of stuff, he doesn't sell it. People go to his land just to eat the things that he grows. Try using the chrome. Yeah, yeah. Using chrome. The chrome. <clears throat> and he's had, uh, you know, he's had uh, students from universities go by and to test his soil and so forth. And he grows things that are not supposed to grow together. Oh, this is an acidic plant. This is a you know non-acidic plant. He plants them right next to each other, and they grow, and they grow. <clears throat> and he doesn't worry, like I mentioned earlier, he doesn't worry about spacing things out. He just puts the seeds on because that's how things grow in nature. You know, you don't you don't see in nature where oh oh it's a it's a it's a watermelon plant oh it needs to be so many you know inches or feet apart. It's just things just grow. They just grow. <clears throat> if you have good fertile soil and you have the you know you have the way it should be, basically things the plants kind of move themselves because the dirt isn't hard. So you even though you plant things together, they'll kind of move apart. And make their own space. How did you water your plants? Uh, hold on. Well, basically, I do. I do water my plants. I kind of water them on, on the. I try to water from the ground because uh, I know the tomato. You know, they 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 say that if you water the leaves too much and they stay wet, they'll get some kind of viruses and stuff like that. But if you watch the film, you'll see that the guy, he pretty much never waters. Because once, whatever water does get in there, the, the, the mulch and the wood chips, 
they keep it from evaporating. So he hardly ever waters his, his uh, the only time he waters is when he's uh, planting seeds. But he's got a whole you know, ap apple orchard that he says he's never watered. The only water it's ever gotten is the water from, uh, from the rain. You need to use the mouse thing. Yeah, and especially now that we're under a severe drought here in the valley. It's, yeah, that's why I asked. Yeah, but like, uh, we had a lot of rain, so I haven't really done any, any, any water into my... Uh... <clears throat> but basically, what, he, what, what happened, if, if you, when you watch the film, you'll see that what happened is that he, he moved out into to, to Washington to start a... Uh, he's been farming all his life, you know, hard labor. He moved down to, to Washington realized that uh, he built a water well, realized that he wasn't getting nowhere near enough water for his apple orchard that he wanted. So he's there thinking, you know, God, how am I going to do this? How am I going to do this? And then he looks next to his property. What does he see? He just sees a huge forest. They get the same amount of water that he does. What was the difference is that that land is covered so the water doesn't just evaporate. So that's pretty much what he discovered. Uh, here, again, here you'll see... Uh, some carrots that we grew, uh, broccoli, uh, a combination of Swiss chards and, uh, and wheat greens, tomatoes, these are cherry tomatoes, these are cherry tomatoes, lettuce, broccoli, cilantro, you got some uh, ser ser serrano peppers there, some, uh, this is uh, parsley, parsley. Uh, I've got a peach tree that I have on there. Got a peach tree. Here's some carrots that I pulled out. Yeah, they don't, they're not all nice and pretty, right? But they're obviously nutritious and, and they, they're, they taste good. Um, and these are just earlier pictures as I was growing my stuff. You can see I have some uh, uh, mulch there. It's already kind of, you know, it's decomposed. So, so my, my, the, the, the land's a lot, uh, I guess, I, I, I would say mature, I guess. How about weeds or weeds? Uh, yeah, I just I just pull them out with my hands, pretty much. I pull them out with my hands. I just and then most of them come out quite easily because again, it, the dirt's not hard because it's it's covered by by some mulch, so it keeps it nice, soft. <clears throat> uh, here's some watermelons I had. These see these watermelon plants here? Those just kind of grew on their own. <laughs> I would throw th things in the back, uh, like uh, I would have a like compost pile. And obviously, see just kind of scattered. <clears throat> These were growing uh, back in November, and then when it got really cold, you know, they kind of died off. Uh, check out this picture here a friend of mine sent me. This is a friend of mine from Seattle. <clears throat> Look at those tomato plants there. He, he, he was using a self watering container, but he's the one that, that pointed me to the film. <clears throat> when he sent me this picture, he was saying that he was getting like 50 to 20 tomatoes a day. What? from those five plants right there. And he's like, dude, I, I don't even know what to do with my tomatoes anymore. And he makes tomato sauce, he makes this and that. <clears throat> uh, obviously he has a, a bunch of stuff growing in the back also. And I remember, I think when he sent me this picture, I remember sharing it because he said that, that at this age, he thought he was gonna be driving fancy cars and stuff like that. And now he's just happy taking a picture in front of his tomato plants. He's got strawberries, he's got all kinds of trees. <clears throat> I guess his neighbors like him. <laughs> yeah, and this, this is a, a melon I had growing there, tomato. I used to you know, try to grow things in seed, in a little seed, seeding packs, uh, seed starter packets. I just plant things in the ground. It all grows. It all grows, eventually it'll grow. Here's uh, some uh, squash. And look at these flowers here, look how nice they look. I mean, you can even have them in your garden. You know, have, you know, you got some nice flowers there. <clears throat> I haven't had any success with corn, although I did plant some corn. It's growing. Some broccoli here. Spaceship, you know, stuff like that. <laughs> but uh, you know, based what I'm here to tell you is that gardening is extremely easy. It may take uh, quite a bit of work. <clears throat> but you can, I mean, there's people that are willing to help you get a garden started. Uh, I try to buy, uh, most of the things that I grow are heirloom seeds. So seeds that I, that I hope, mm -hmm. uh, 
as best as I can, have not been genetically modified. So uh, <clears throat> most of the seeds that I have are that. I have seeds that I've grown from seeds that I myself harvest. So I harvest my own seeds and I, you know, from plants from last year, and I replant them. Like these tomatoes, I mean these uh, watermelon plants there, they're seeds from a, from a watermelon that grew. Uh, a lot of the, like cilantro that I have on there, or seeds from uh, seeds that I harvested from my plant. Um, the tomato, I haven't planted any, any of the seeds that I got because these are just packages that, that I bought. But, <clears throat> I mean, that's the best I can tell you. It's, it's extremely easy. The only thing is just getting started. Before I got started, I thought, you know, I was going to have to learn all these things. And yeah, there's some things that you'll learn, you know, to make things easier for you. But even if you don't do them, you know, things will grow. Like my tomato plants, uh, these tomato plants here, I kind of trimmed them off, cut a lot of greens out of it or whatever. But even if I didn't do that, tomatoes will still be there. You do some things just to make them mature a little bit faster, like, you know, let, get, let, let the sun get in there, uh, things like that. Um, any questions or any? What about the seasons? I mean, does it matter what time of year it is? Or? Uh, I'm sure to some degree it does. Maybe here in the valley it may not as much, you know, but uh, I had mentioned earlier, uh, the guy from the film, he had made a comment where he says, you know, just plant stuff. When it's ready to grow, it'll grow. And that's what I realized. I have, I have uh, cilantro plants that are growing that I planted back in November and they're just coming out. They're not coming out where I planted them because I dug up and planted some new stuff on there. But I've got, uh, I'll notice a watermelon plant growing over here, a uh, cilantro growing over here, and some things that I may not recognize growing, I may let them grow a little bit just to see if, if it's something that, that, uh, that I planted or maybe it's just a weed, I don't know, right? Because I'm not too familiar with a lot of things. Mm -hmm. But, uh, I mean, that's, that's just how things, I mean, if nobody was here to plant these tomatoes or, or the original tomatoes when they were growing, what would happen? The tomato would just fall down, the seed would just eventually be there, and then it would eventually, uh, you know, grow again. So it doesn't, uh, <clears throat> I just kind of plant stuff. I do follow some schedules every now and then if I see that something's not working, but for the most part, I just plant things and uh, I'll see what grows. And things grow. Uh, these, uh, <clears throat> like these beets that I was eating here, the greens. You know, we ate like for two months before I even pulled them out. I would just cut the leaves, we'd eat them, and then more leaves grow. Cilantro, I just cut the cilantro. Lettuce, I would just cut the lettuce, and then it just just let it grow, let it grow. I, I did, I, I, the broccoli, I thought it just produced one broccoli, but I cut that one off, and I had little broccoli coming out, so I kind of let it grow a little bit more, and then I cut some more off. So it's just, uh, it's amazing that I'm still getting uh, some broccoli from a, uh, some little broccoli plants I have there. You must be spending a lot on fertilizers and insecticides and stuff. Ah, uh, just the original uh, sixty bucks that I spent to uh, to prepare the land. <clears throat> and uh, last year, I remember I had uh, a lot of squash plants and and uh, the uh, cucumbers. And there's a uh, and I would water on top, right? I would just kind of do the rest of the water, and then you get this mildew that they, it's called. Uh, I think it's called slippery or silvery mildew that the squash plants always get or whatever. And then I just kind of ignored it. I said, you know what, if the plant's going to die, it's going to die. And then, you know, it got real hot and pretty much it, the heat just kind of killed the mildew. I had some broccoli plants. When I first started my garden here, I had bought some, uh, some broccoli plants at, uh, at one of the nurseries. I planted like six of them in a row. And then I noticed that some of the broccoli plants were being attacked by some little black bugs. And I was going to pull out the broccoli plant and just throw it away, right? And I said, you know what, I'm going to leave it there. Hopefully the bugs will just eat that plant and not the other ones. And they all produce broccoli. Even the ones that were being attacked by the bugs produce broccoli. So it just goes to show that, hey, you know, just because it's being attacked by a bug doesn't mean it's going to die or it's not going to be good. You know. <clears throat> and the problems that we have with agriculture right now are because if all I grow is one plant, then an insect's going to come in and eat that plant, and there's no competition for that insect because I'm not attracting attracting other insects that might uh, eat that insect 
or might uh, you know, or other plants that might uh, keep other insects away. So by planting a variety of different things, you're attracting all kinds of insects, ladybugs and these bugs and these bugs. And then there's some bugs that you can just kind of get rid of with your hand, you know, just pick them up and put them in a can or whatever. But I haven't had, uh, this year I haven't had much, much of, uh, I haven't been dealing with anything in particular. Yeah. In, the, in that film that you mentioned, uh, they, they say that the reason plants in the wild don't get attacked as badly is because they have water, a lot of water inside them, and that's what yeah. plants don't like, right? The fact that, that, that yeah, he does say something that is you know because these are more there's more water in there that the bugs don't usually they don't want to really attack healthy plants you know they want something that's I guess that's that's kind of dying off and, and stuff like that but no I haven't I haven't really used anything he does recommend you know if you have a problem use some kind of a of a, of a, of a, a hot pepper and just kind of spray it you know blend it up and spray it on the plants because bugs don't like that and it's not going to harm the plant. But I haven't really used, the only thing I've used is maybe some things for ants. Um, I do have a, I remember watching a video and, and you mix sugar with a, with borax and you put it in a container and just leave it there and you know, the ants, the ants you know, well, they eat the sugar but they also, they can't differentiate between the sugar and them because they're both white so they'll take some of the borax and that will kill the nest or whatever. But I haven't, you know, I've dealt with ants. I don't, you know, I may just over water sometimes kind of get annoyed and they just kind of leave, but the ants that I have had there, they haven't really caused any, any, any uh, problems. The only reason I get rid of them is because I don't want to get attacked by the ants, right, stepping on them or having to deal with, with ants. But other than that a problem for the plants, I, I don't think, I haven't had any problems with the, the ants destroying any of my, my harvest or whatever. Has, how, does, how has it affected your like family and, and friends and neighbors' social lives? I mean, well, you know, you start realizing that a lot of people want to garden. And I did have a friend who had, uh, I remember his wife was, had bought some starter kits and they had some seeds and, you know, they all kind of died off or whatever. But, <clears throat> but he does want to start a garden in, in, his, uh, in his yard. And, I mean, the only thing is that, that, you know, that first year, some people may get a lot of stuff and you may not. You know, it's just, it's just really a patience game. But once you get started, you start planting all kinds of things. Plant something this week, plant it again next week, you start pulling out every week something to eat. <clears throat> and uh, like I said, we'll eat lettuce just from the garden, you know. The lettuce, you know, usually I do wash it because there's some dirt that kind of gets trapped in there. But the broccoli, we can just cut it off and, and just eat it right then and there. Cilantro, we just cut it off and eat it right then and there. And it's it's amazing, my, my four-year-old will eat cilantro from the, just, you know, like that. Lettuce, broccoli. Uh, the tomatoes, the carrots, you know, they're always asking me to get carrots. I'm, I'm running out of carrots, but they're always asking me to get carrots. So it's, uh, I think it's, it's, uh, it's going to be beneficial, of course, to my entire family. My family at home in Lyford, they want to start a garden there also. So it's just, a, it's just a chain reaction, I guess. And the thing is, <clears throat> even though it's easy, it's always easier when when somebody is doing it and when somebody's there to help you. You know, like for example, when I started, I started after a friend of mine had already been gardening in, in, uh, in Seattle. I didn't know he had been gardening. I talked to him about hydroponics and he's the one that, and once I knew he was doing it, I said, you know what, maybe it's time for me to start. And I just kind of started. So, uh, I know for a while we were doing uh, the community gardening with, uh, with Sarah and stuff like that. I don't, I don't know, I'm not sure if you went to some of those events. So maybe starting something like that again. Because again, I, like they say, money doesn't grow on trees, but what do you want the money for? And what, what can we turn these tomatoes into? You know? To suggest that the trees are less important than the money. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, if you want money, then you can turn your tomatoes into money. And basically money is what just a, 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 mean, a medium of exchange. And you can easily exchange tomatoes for other things. Of course, in our society, you know, we're still too deep into the money to buy, you know, to, I, I'm, I'm sure I can trade my tomatoes for some of the things that I would like for my energy bill, right? But, but even just having this, you know, saves me a lot of money. And my goal next is, uh, is to get, I actually want to get two chickens, two chickens to lay eggs for us. And all this scrap here, all the stuff that I don't use, I feed it to the chickens. 
and the chickens will turn it into compost a lot faster than me having it there and, and you know, because I get a lot of extra greens that, that, you know, we just don't eat. And nowadays, you know, I'll pull out some cilantro, eat it there, maybe keep it a day or two, after three days, I just throw it away, put it back into my compost. And that's the good thing about, I can grow a whole field of tomatoes and just eat from one plant and the rest becomes compost and fertilizer for your next year. So it's, it's impossible to, to overdo it when you're doing something like this. I mean, even if, I mean, like I said, I mean, if, if we build certain things, we create waste. But with, with planting, what waste can you create? Yeah, it just goes back into the soil. Just compost it and use it for next year. So even if I, if I wanted to grow my whole yard of tomatoes because I was going to sell them at the farmer's market and I didn't seal one tomato, what would I do with the rest of the tomatoes? Hmm. Eat what I could, give some away. Whatever is rotten, I just throw it back into my, or make seeds from it. But I, I think uh, that growing our food at home is, is probably going to be one of the biggest keys to setting ourselves free or to moving on to the next step. Because <clears throat> what do protesters do? What do they want? Mm -hmm. You know, we're going to protest because we want a better life or whatever. Uh, I remember that whole thing about March against Monsanto and then I put that post yesterday. Why? Well, I'm not going to march against them. I'm just going to plant against them, you know. Buy my seeds, plant. And not, you know, that you're saying not buy as many products from them as I can, you know. Yeah. In our in our house, we we haven't eliminated meat. We've cut down on the amount of meats that we put into our into our plates. So we don't spend as much money on meats as, as before. <clears throat> and uh, I I uh, what I want to do maybe within a month once I start getting enough food, I want to do a uh, a week or two where I just only eat. Food that's in my garden and see how well that goes you know see how far I can take it just eating from there as much as I can do you think this uh, method will scale up I hear that uh, Seattle is trying to start a food forest which I assume is similar I'm, to this. I'm, you know I think if if, if, uh, if if people push for it or just throw seeds you know I got like I said in my yard I have things growing in places I didn't plant you know, I'll walk through the yard and I've got some, because I'm always trying to transfer dirt. I had a pile of dirt over here that I was using for compost. And then, you know, things fall and things, and, and they just grow. But I think, <clears throat> I think if, uh, even if we didn't, if they didn't do it, maybe if, 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 uh, if we got together and just started planting things, you know, just throwing, you know, seeds places in, in, in parks and stuff, mm -hmm. and then watching it grow, you know. And go in there and picking, and then people watch you. What are you doing? Oh, I'm just picking, you know, lettuce, or I'm picking uh, whatever it is that you're picking. Wouldn't the state be angry about that? <laughs> you know, I, I, you know, I'm sure they would, but at the same time, I mean, I, I, I'm thinking there's there's changes that are going, maybe just not at the lower level, but also at the higher level, like a, a shift in consciousness that people want are looking for a. a a better world for, 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 for themselves and for, for the people around them, you know, because they're, they're starting to realize the connection between, you know, someone up here and someone down here. Maybe not as much as we would like to, but I think it's, it is becoming a, I think people are realizing. Oh yeah, the, the, the worst things get, I mean, I have a theory that, you know, we won't be able to get rid of the monetary system until there's like an economic collapse, you know, until mm -hmm. it all goes to shit, that's when people start listening. Yeah. Doc Fresco, the guy from the Venus Project, he said during the Great Depression, that's when people were willing to listen because now they're out of a job and they have no other choice but yeah. to try to find a solution. <laughs> I mean, that's what happened. Yeah, that's what happened with the with the Occupy movement, right? Eventually, you know, but some people are protesting because they want jobs. What's going to happen when they get that job? Yeah, they'll abandon the movement. <laughs> they they now they're you know, and that's understandable, right? Some people can't be part of something because they're too busy working, you know, working for what? Trying to make money to grow, to buy food, right? Because that's obviously one of the biggest expenses, at least for us. But if we need to get people to grow in their own gardens. And again, like I said, I've, uh, you know, in a year, it took me to get to this point. It took me to get to this point. And there's not too many things that you can mess up with a garden, you know. It's just, if you have it, if you plant it on the ground, for the most part, you don't have to do too much. 
Maybe in containers you might have to worry about maybe overwatering or underwatering because you don't know what's going on. But what I do is I just take the, the hose, whatever I'm watering, I just put it on the ground, I open it, and I just kind of move it here, and then I kind of move it over here, and then I kind of move it over here. But if I do water, it's just once a, once a week at the most. Now for the, uh, the newspaper, did you have to go out and buy that, or is there somewhere where they have like old newspapers? Actually, uh, I posted a, 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 on Facebook, and some guy, uh, Kevin Hertz, I think his name was, and he's he's uh, either part owner or or something on on a uh, old on uh, business eighty three, and uh, I think it's twenty sixth street or somewhere on there. There's uh, I think it's I, if I drive by it I know which one it is. But I just went in there, told him, hey, Kevin told me I'd come and get as much new paper as I needed. It's a recycling center there. Yeah. So I just went there and I got a you know a whole bunch of uh, newspaper more than what I needed actually. Now you still had, I still had grass coming up. Not as much, but I'll just kind of dig in there. The grass is probably the hardest thing to pull up because the grass usually comes from the bottom. But I just would kind of dig and just pull out the grass. But I mean, it's not really a problem. I, a friend of mine, his dad had a, a squash plant, like a huge squash plant that had been growing for a while. And he had it in his, in his yard with grass. Because what is the grass going to do? It protects your soil also. I mean, the only reason we don't want it is because it may be still some nutrients. But then again, even if it does steal nutrients, what happens to the grass is going to die, and then put the nutrients back into the. So there's all kind. I mean, it, there's all kinds of things that you can do. It's just uh, it was an efficient way to kill most of the grass, from keep it from coming up to the. But even even then, I had a, I had abandoned my my garden for a while before I got started started on it again. And what I use to kill grass and weeds, I use vinegar. Mm -hmm. I just buy a bottle of vinegar, two dollars, put it in a little spray bottle, and I just spray it. I didn't know that. And I remember I went to a uh, gardening place down on, on uh, Jackson, and there was a bottle for thirty, a gallon for thirty-two dollars, and it was basically just vinegar and lemon. That was it. <laughs> you know, and all I, I you can just buy the vinegar. The only thing with the vinegar, now the lemons are worth. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that, yeah. But if you, you know, I, I'm gonna add more. I have a, a an orange tree and a peach tree, and then I'm gonna add, uh, you know, lemon trees and you know, get all kinds of trees. And then the next step after growing food, the next step would be how to preserve some of the food for so you can have all kinds of uh, of things throughout the year. Even though they may not grow all year, you can have. Uh, I mean, we used to buy frozen uh, carrots and stuff like that. Now if I grow a whole bunch of carrots, why not just cut them up myself and freeze those? And then I can have my frozen broccoli or my frozen carrots or whatever and then just kind of eat it through throughout the year. But Armando, if everyone starts growing their own food, won't that cut into the profits of the giant food companies? <laughs> that's, that's the goal, right? <laughs> Something we're willing to live with. I think that's ultimately, like, what should be the goal of our to become less dependent on the government. If you think about it, that's why we're more so dependent upon wages and earning yeah. living. It's because we need that money to buy food sources. So what could be if we had our own food source, we wouldn't depend on, on that kind of economic system. Yeah, the more people that are growing it, the more we can swap things, you know. Hey, you know, my carrot didn't do too well, but I know this person over here has a bunch of carrots, maybe I'll give him some of my broccoli or some lettuce or and even at the farmers market, some of the prices are a little a little uh, hefty, you know, I went and I bought some stuff and I'm thinking, you know what, okay, yeah, maybe I can afford to pay, you know, four dollars for these carrots, but, you know, the people that really need it, what are they going to buy? Exactly. They're going to buy the cheapest food possible because, hey, that's all that they can afford. They'll buy the cheapest, you know, watermelons, the cheapest, you know, carrots, the cheapest lettuce, the cheapest onions, the cheapest because they're not going to spend that much money on, on their food. They can't. You know, some people obviously they can and they just don't. But some people, they just can't afford to pay that much money. And even me, I was, we were buying at one point we were buying a whole bunch of organic produce and stuff like that. And then some of it goes to waste, right? Because you don't always eat it. Sometimes you're not. You just don't want any lettuce, right? You want to eat something else. This way, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't care what goes to waste. I really don't care. I'll, I'll cut up the lettuce. If nobody eats it, it just goes back into the garden. You know, the ultimate recycle. 
Yeah, 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 the ultimate recycling. And I just, I have two uh, 35 gallon uh, drums that I made into, you know, composter. So I just put it in there, kick it around every now and then, and that's it. So uh, anything else you want to share or comments, questions? Can I get some of that food? <laughs> Yeah, I'm waiting for the tomatoes. Uh, I have, I just have about one lettuce. I have four lettuce plants that I kind of let grow high, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna get ready to, to get those seeds out. But I do have some, uh, some that are just seedlings. Hopefully, I'll get a bunch of lettuce there. But uh, what I'm doing is I'm, uh, I'm gonna half, not maybe about one third of my whole backyard is gonna be garden. So I'm gonna change the location. So I'm gonna have, I think I have about, uh, well, right now it's a 16 by 24. And I'm going to turn it into a 60 by about 16. So it's going to be a much bigger garden. And I want to plant, uh, <clears throat> I'm going to plant all kinds of food to eat, but I'm going to plant a lot of tomatoes and I'm going to try to sell them at the farmer's market. And my goal is to sell stuff, <clears throat> like let's say I'm selling tomatoes, I would go to HEB, find out what the price is for the cheapest tomato there, and then sell the tomato at that price. So that it's, it's, you know, you're, well, I can buy this tomato for whatever the price is, you know, a dollar a pound, or I can buy this homegrown tomato for the same price. Because right now you buy a cheap tomato or you buy the organic tomato, you're looking at a, at a, at a, at a huge price difference. Unless you're in certain states like in Seattle, a friend of mine can buy cheaper, can buy organic produce cheaper than non-organic. Because, you know, a lot of the stuff that's being produced there is in uh, locally. So. Yeah, I mean, I, like, I said, and, you know, when you're looking at the label organic, I found out a, a year or two ago that all that label does for you is that 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 person hasn't had hasn't used any chemicals to grow their stuff, but there's still chemicals in the land, you know, like. You know, I haven't added anything to this, but, you know, obviously there's this land that I'm on was probably used for farming at some point, you know, so once it, I'm sure there, there is a few things that get in there, but uh, like uh, when, when I was showing my sisters the, the video of the broccoli, and Joe, you ought to wash it, why, why would I have to wash it? You know, I just, I don't have any chemicals on there, I don't really have to wash it, you know. Unless I, unless I really don't want to get any dirt in my, but like, like, uh, like the Swiss chard and the, these greens here, I mean, you can pull it out, you can see if there's bugs on there or not, you know. And you'll see there's no dirt, dirt, on, dirt on there. Tomatoes, you know, they, you can just kind of pull it out. The lettuce, you know, maybe you might have to do something because there's a lot of cracks in there where dirt and maybe little bugs get in there, so you just kind of rinse them off. But, uh, you know, sometimes I'm just out there, my girls, we just pick out, you know, a few greens and we just, you know, just eat it from there. Mm. And you'll see that's what the, the guy from the film does. He just, that's what he eats. He's eating while he's out there and, you know, he's there moving some dirt around, eating, and that's it. Mm. And, and the benefit of having animals to do your composting makes it a lot easier. Rabbits are probably the most efficient composters because you can, whatever, it from as soon as they eat it, when they when they're done doing their business, you can use it straight into your garden. You know, I mean, it's, it's it doesn't get any better than that. And of course, if for those that eat rabbits, you know, you, you're going to have plenty of rabbits to eat if you want to eat rabbits, right? <laughs> so, I, I'm not I'm not at the point to where I can kill an animal, but if I had to, I might. But right now, if we, for the chick, if we, if we do get chickens, it's mainly for the eggs, and so they can compost my stuff a lot faster. And take care of, of, of bugs at home, right? So they'll eat spiders. I can let them loose in my garden. Uh, obviously, I don't know what they would do in my garden. I them, uh, they would just eat bugs or they start kind of eating all my stuff at once. But well, spiders eat a lot of bugs too. <laughs> yeah, that's true. There are uh, other countries in the world where they encourage you know citizens to have backyard gardens. Why? What do you think is the cultural differences between them and, and ours? I guess uh, the, that huge corporation profit uh, thing that we have going on here, and then the control issue, I believe, right? Because they want to 
the more they control it. I think uh, Ray Pettis was the one that introduced me to some, uh, I don't remember, but a series of books that he was reading where it says control the food and you can control the people, right? Because, mm -hmm. I mean, what is, I mean, if you need to go to somebody to get your food, I mean, they pretty much control all your, you got to waste money to go to get, you got to gas, wait in line, and then, of course, when you're there, oh, but there's a candy bar, and then there's this, and then there's that, right? And some extra stuff that you may be trying to get away from, right? But, of course, not that easy to get away from some of the things that we've been trained to eat. Yeah, and I think a lot of countries, they push for, like, you know, uh, people to do their own farming simply out of necessity, you know? That, that's usually what drives people to do things like recycle and be smarter about things. We're kind of spoiled here in this country, so we don't do things until we absolutely have to do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I think, like you said, we were dependent on uh, on all these, you know, government assistance. And, uh, and and we really don't realize what government assistance really is, right? Because the subsidized corn, right, that's government assistance. Yeah. And they produce all this sugar or all these... Uh, uh, what is it, high fructose corn syrup that they put in all our products for the most part, right? Oh, yeah. I'm sure if I tested my food here, it'd probably have high uh, fructose corn syrup from the ground, right? So it's, it's, it's everywhere that, that you can't buy something that doesn't have it, you know, to some degree. And then they have those commercials, right? Have you heard about high fructose corn syrup? What? <laughs> right? It's not as bad as they say. It's not as bad as they say. <laughs> Sure. Well, you can also survive with the, you know, some people get shot in the head with a bullet, they can survive, so why don't we all... But yeah, there's, 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 there's a lot of manipulation out there, and uh, there's you know, hidden agendas as much as we, some people may not believe it, but there's, there's all these things out there. There's control, I mean, that's, that's why they, they ban collecting rainwater. What does that do, you know? Eventually, they may want to uh, control people growing growing uh, food at home, you know. Oh, yeah. They might want to find people, right? And get their cut. And get their cut. You have to hide in the backyard or else if you do it in the front yard, they'll come after you. At least I've heard of several, several cases yeah. of that happening. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. But, you know, if, if, uh, there's, there's, different, there's different things you can do to make, make uh, you know, edible gardens look a certain, a certain way, you know, just to keep the, the community from... from uh, from being unhappy with you. But at the same time, you know, they can also come get food from you, right? So, the only thing I need to work more on is some fruit so that we can have a, I wanna, I wanna work, uh, plant some strawberries and things like that so we can have uh, some sweet treats to eat, blueberries and stuff like that. So. Grapes? No, more than blackberries. The, the blackberries? Yeah, right now. Oh, I, yeah, I have a blackberry bush, but it's just, those, those things are just too wild. You know, I have a, I put it in a, in a cage and I've got, so I'm, I'm waiting for some blackberries. What yeah. haven't you tried to grow yet that you, that you want to? Uh, I'm sure there's plenty of stuff. Uh, what haven't I tried? I, I have, I, I bought strawberry plants before, but the dog got to them. I don't know, I guess he just wanted strawberries. <laughs> That's why I had to build my fence. Uh, but what haven't I grown? Uh, I don't know. I, I did have a blueberry bush at one point, and the dog got to it also. But I would say, you know, like <coughs> blueberries and uh, strawberries, things that I want to, I really do want to plant for consumption. Did uh, what about like flowering plants that draws in like, uh, you know. Uh, Pollinators like the hummingbirds or, or insects. Like uh, that. Well, I mean, all these, you know, tomato plant flowers, the the cucumbers. Oh yeah. They all they all produce flowers. The like the squash that I, the the squash that I was showing you here. Like this one here. Look look at those flowers there. I mean, that's almost like a like a. Something you can have in your front yard with those flowers. You know, you cut up some of the green leaves and you'll have some nice looking flowers. But yeah, you do, you, I mean, there's, there's, there's plenty of flowers. I mean, some things we don't see the flowers because we never let them grow that, like, uh, like the lettuce. 
if you let it grow, it goes about this big, and then you start getting some flowers from it. Um, I have some carrots that I'm going to let grow. I just want to see how the flowers look, you know. Mm -hmm. Maybe they'll look nice enough to have in the, in, in the garden. Like in the front, I, I do want to plant some, uh, some basil bushes because they look nice, you know. Once you start getting the flowers and the leaves, you know, that's something that looks nice. I have two containers where I put some, uh, some lavender and I put some chives around it. I did this yesterday and then I put another one, I put some lavender and I put some uh, cumin around it. So we'll see how they look. And obviously the lavender plant is going to look nice and we'll see how it looks with the other, with the other stuff on it. So it'll be things that we can pick and eat and also have something that looks, at least I hope it looks, I mean I've seen the pictures on, on the seeding packs that I have, right? And it looks, they look like nice little flowers and stuff like that. No, I, was, I was thinking more to attract uh, pollinating insects and birds and stuff like that. Well, I mean, I, there, there is, uh, I've, I've read some specific plants that are more attractive than others, but uh, I'll see bees in my, in my garden here, yeah. and stuff like that. That's good. <laughs> and of course, you know, like I said, there's ants also. They walk in the flowers, they come out. So uh, Sometimes I'm, I'm a little concerned with some of the plants, they get a little bit big before they start producing any fruit or whatever, but, but eventually they do. Like some of my tomato plants weren't, you know, I had some flowers on there, but I hadn't seen any, any tomatoes, and now I'm starting to see the tomatoes on there. I think the guy on that video said that uh, pruning is actually one of the most, uh, provokes the most growth that you yeah, possibly do, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, picking, picking stuff from your garden, you know, because then the plant thinks, hey, I need to produce more stuff. I need to produce more stuff. And yeah, once you become more experienced, you start learning how to prune the, your fruit trees because there's certain ways you gotta prune them so that you get uh, more fruit the next year. So you can keep it small yet produce a whole bunch of fruit. Because in some trees, a friend of mine was telling me some trees that after that branch produces fruit, it's not gonna produce fruit anymore. So why do you wanna keep that branch on there? You know, Others only produces fruit on, on older, on older, uh, uh, branches, so you want to make sure you keep some branches there. <clears throat> but I mean, the, the, all that comes out comes later, you know. Even but even if you didn't do any of that, you're still gonna get food, you know. Even if I don't prune the peach tree or the orange tree there, yeah, I may wind up with a big butchy tree, right? But every year I'm gonna have enough oranges for me to eat, right? So even even if if I don't put a cage on my tomatoes so I can get more tomatoes. I'm still going to get tomatoes. Yeah, some of them may rot in a lot faster because they're on the ground and you know they're. But you're still going to get stuff. So, what do you think if we applied the lessons of going of following nature to other parts of society? What could we do? Well, so I mean, everything's going to just fall in line, I guess, as best as as best as it can. You know, it's it's uh, it's a shame that uh, we have to deal with man-made laws more than, uh, than the laws of nature. Yeah. And I think it's just a stereotype that thinking that that, uh, that the human being is, is a violent individual, you know? Yeah, that, that, that whole, uh, one of the biggest points that I gotta get efficient at putting across, especially when I talk about getting rid of the monetary system, is the fact that humans aren't inherently good, bad, greedy, generous. Yeah. It's all, you know, just from your environment growing up. Because the first question people ask is, well, what's going to, if I'm doing my work, let's say six hours a week, like the Zeitgeist like Movement says, well, to say the next guy is going to do that, you know, but a, a healthy human being seeks, seeks personal satisfaction, not just money. And I have yeah. my own uh, personal example. When I got out of the military, after a couple of deployments, I had quite a bit of money saved up, so I just, I was unemployed for like over a year, man, you know, and that whole time, I didn't collect like one check of unemployment, which... I still haven't decided whether that was smart or stupid, but you know, noble or uh, dumb. But uh, I just used my deployment money, but I wasn't happy. You know, I was just smoking a mass amount of pot to keep my mind stimulated. You know, trying to find all these distractions. I had everything, man. I had DVR, internet. You know, I had the leather couches, the big screen. I had every amenity a human could could want. And I even ate organic food, but I still wasn't happy. You know, it wasn't until I started going back to school and seeking personal accomplishments. And I realized everybody might not be like that right now, but because everybody's not healthy, you know, mentally, you know, or physically or whatever. So that's why, you know, uh, 
get across to people that if, if a person is healthy, especially mentally, they'll seek personal satisfaction. It won't just be money that's motivating yeah. them to do things, you know. That's the biggest thing. Well, I mean, that's why yeah, and I, I'm, I'm trying to, to teach my girls that, well, what do you want the money for? For food. Well, then just grow the food, you know. Especially if you can't, right, if, if you're able to, which, which again, it's not, it's not a complicated thing. I've, I've come to realize it's not complicated. I mean, that's, if anything here, it's just, it's not hard to grow food. Plants grow by themselves. They've been growing for thousands and thousands and millions of years all by themselves before man even touched them. And you're not worried about meeting a quota or anything like that because you're not trying to mass produce it and sell it to a ton of people and get rid of yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, and I'm not worried about overproducing either because anything over gets, gets recycled back into the, into the garden. So I think, I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's as efficient as you, can, as you can get. I mean, it's like if we're using solar energy, right? You're not worried about collecting too much sun, right? Because, oh, we're going to know you because you're sucking up too much sun. You say, no, it's, it's just going to be there, you know? You want to get into, into means of production and, and means of, uh, of, of doing things that overproduction doesn't create waste, you know? And that's if you're using solar energy, tidal energy or, or any of those energy, I mean, who cares if, hey, we're getting too much wind, what are we going to do with all that power? Who cares? Just release it into the, I mean, just capture as much as you can and tomorrow we'll get some more because it's going to be there, you know? So. Thank you, Armando, for sharing with us. Thank you for listening.